Hello, I'm Anthony Hobbs, and as you can see, I have some visual aid this time, a Jaguar man, yes. Well, actually, his proper name is the Jaded Jaguar, yeah. And he has a weapon with feathers or metal feathers at the side, because that's the style of spear that the ancient Mayans had. And what's the significance of the ancient Mayans? Well, they were very similar to the Aztecs, and um, I'm going to review the 1980s TV show, The Mysterious Cities of Gold. Oh yeah, and here's, um, here's, uh, yep, that's um, a condor with a laser gun. Yeah, this is another <laughs> battle beast. He's visual aid. Anyway, he's significant because, um, yes, they have a vehicle that's shaped like a big condor, yeah. And um, he has a laser gun because there's one episode of the Cities of Gold when the man in the golden mask is explaining how, oh, the, the Heaver people and the ancient Atlanteans from 6,000 years ago, they had tanks with laser cannons. And they had rifles that fired, laser rifles, yeah, yeah. Now you, now, you could say that is nonsense. Because, of course, 6,000 years ago, they didn't have regular guns. Never mind laser guns. This is crazy, yeah. And then later we see uh, the golden condor. It's a vehicle shaped like a big golden condor. It doesn't have a runway. No, it has anti-gravity travel. It floats above the air and flies in the sky. Again, nonsense. We didn't have flying machines, not in the 16th century. Certainly not 6,000 years ago. The Olmec machine, that's like a, shaped like a big metal head that floats in the air. It flies of anti-gravity travel. However, big however, you could say that's wrong. That is grossly historically inaccurate. But the ancient Mayan civilization from more or less 6,000 years ago, we know very little about them. Because we found descendants of them, you know, when Europeans uh, colonised what we now call North and South America. We have their ancestors, yeah, but the original Mayas, we know very little about them. You know, all their cities were all found in ruins, so they died a long time ago. In other words, you can't say that's wrong, they didn't have flying machines, because we don't know. We weren't there at the time, you know, all we knew is that they were very intelligent, but we don't know precisely what inventions they had, yeah. In other words, yes, th this show is a bit different. They do take a few liberties. It is science fiction. We don't have flying vehicles that you can use anti-gravity travel to take off. We don't have that now, much less in the 16th century. But it uses science fiction elements. Because normally science fiction is set in the future. Well, this is set in the past. Yes, the ancient minds were really intelligent and could make technology that we can't even dream of. Yeah, but something happened to them that wiped them out. We don't know precisely what it was. It's all... A big mystery, yeah. And here's the sad thing. When I first saw this cartoon, when I was about six and a half, I hadn't learned about inventions yet at school, so I didn't know what has and hasn't been invented yet. So I didn't know. I didn't know it was wrong. I thought, why are two of the characters really amazed that they're in a flying machine? One says, am I dreaming? And the other one says, you're not dreaming. We are flying. Because he's amazed, because no, they didn't know flying machines even existed yet. That's why they're so amazed, yeah. OK, I'll start right at the beginning. When I was more or less six and a half, that's when I first heard about this cartoon, The Mysterious Cities of Gold. It was well advertised, yes, they showed a clip from the first ever episode when Esteban, the Spanish boy, is in robes and he's sitting in a big chair that's on a series of ropes and pulleys. He's really high up, uh, like a 50-foot tall pole, and it's raining. Not a very exciting, thrilling image, is it? No, so I thought, no, I've seen all I want of that, and... No, I had no interest in it. I do, however, remember by chance seeing snippets and little bits of episodes, but I thought, no, it's not for me. I don't like the look of it, don't like the style. I was quite set in my ways, yes. I, I Not very open-minded, yeah. Plus, there was something on at the same time that I wanted to watch instead. Then one day, my elder sister said, come on, give it a shot. See, one episode all the way through. Plus, she really wanted to see it, yes. Yeah, so okay, one episode, and we'll see how it goes. The first episode I saw properly all the way through, it's when the heroes, they meet these uh, like Incas of a lost tribe of Incas and they, they build boats out of reeds, yeah. And they go to like a lake town, yeah, a whole uh, town that's like an artificial island all made of reeds and the house and they go there. And yes, that's, it had educational elements as well. Because in real life, yes, there was once an ancient tribe that made boats and houses out of reeds and they still do it that way today. So yes, it was educational and fun at the same time. And then I saw the Urubus, the seven foot tall men that fire bronze arrows and stuff. 
And then they say, we're going to see the, the City of Gold in the very next episode. We must see that. I was a little sceptical. I thought, um, that's a bit soon, isn't it? Well, the last episode is the very next one, you know. Well, spoiler alert, they don't find the City of Gold in the next episode. They find a big stone city, and there's two big mountains with a space between them. And at a certain time of day, the sun goes through the gap between the mountains. And if you're standing at the right bit of the mountain it looks like it's made of gold the city it isn't but it looks like it is because it's bathed in all this big sunlight so when the sun sets and they get closer to the city they realize it's just stone and they're all really disappointed oh a, a genuine city made entirely of gold it doesn't exist well how could it exist there isn't enough gold in the world to make one yeah then they find the golden condor yes and they're all amazed it's a condor like the size of a house and it's yeah yeah it's made entirely of gold. There's a condor here, yeah. And uh, then Mendoza says, now do you believe the cities of gold exist? Have you ever seen anything so magnificent? So yes, that, every now and again, there's hope that the cities of gold truly do exist. And yes, the condor is a big deal, the biggest bird of prey in the world, yeah, yeah. And um, it, at the beginning of each episode, we see the, um, yes, the, the condor in full flight, yeah. Okay, so let me tell you a bit about the story. Um, well, for a start, I thought the city, Cities of Gold was completely made up. No, there is an ancient Mayan legend about a city of gold. Just the one, you know, no, not cities plural, just the one. But this is called the Cities of Gold because the character Tau explains that the kingdom of Heva, before this terrible war happened that made them all extinct, all over the world he built seven cities of gold, yeah. And spoiler alert, we do find one, a city of gold made of you know, made entirely of gold, all the streets, the pavement, everything gold. But only the one, yes. It's called Cities of Gold, plural. Well, where are the other six, then? Well, they leave a hint in the, at the end that we're going to go and find the others. But they, they never did any more series. At least they didn't for some time. Yes, 30 years later, finally, we go and look for the second City of Gold, yeah. Now, the Cities of Gold, the TV show, it's... um. Well, it's, it's not episodic. No, if something's episodic, it means one episode has nothing to do with the events of the next episode. But no, this is all one huge big saga over 30 episodes and all the events are joined together, yeah. The lead character, Esteban, a Spanish boy that has never known his real mother or father. He was adopted by monks in a monastery. Then he gets to meet the character Mendoza that says, no, your father, your real father isn't dead. No, um, he was missing in action, but not actually dead. He was a really good swimmer. He could have swum to shore. And Esteban is like, well, how can I find him? And he says, well, I don't know that much about him. I just know that he went to look for the city of gold. Find the city of gold and you'll find him. And Esteban says, I don't know where the cities of gold are. And Mendoza says, no one knows. We're going to be the first to ever find them. And I remember as a kid thinking, somebody must know where they are. I mean, what about the people that built them? Well, they're extinct now. So yes, you have to, they are lost cities. You've got to find them, yeah. So Esteban never gives up, never gives up heart, you know. And I remember when I was a kid, um, there are many, many episodes. I mean, I started in like episode 17 or 18, but there were still loads, loads more episodes to go. But I didn't complain that it was taking so long to find the city of gold because I thought, a city made entirely of gold, that's worth the wait, surely, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and when they find it, it's so beautiful. These big gates open, the big blinding lights, like the gates of heaven, yeah. And I found out when I was a grown-up, a city of gold would be worth about £6 trillion. Pounds. That's a lot of money. Yeah, it's a heck of a lot, yeah. And um, Zia, she's an Inca girl, about the same age as Esteban. The thing they have in common is the, the, the medallions of the emblem of the sun. And we find out the significant they can open doors. It's a secret passageways in the lost mine cities, yeah. And, of course, they're really significant. You need both of them to open the city of gold, yeah. And then Tau, he's the last descendant of the people of Heva. Heva's like the Mayan equivalent of Atlantis, yeah, a huge island that allegedly sank beneath the sea. But before they did, all their influence and knowledge went on the Western world and the Eastern world, yeah. So, again, although they do take a few liberties, some of the bits of the story have elements of truth in them, yeah. And, of course, when you were a kid... You want to see um, uh, the, the kids as the main characters, yeah. But there are three grown-ups as well. So, yes, when the danger gets a bit too much, the three grown-ups help, help the kids get out of danger. Now, this cartoon first came out in France. Yes, originally in French, then it was dubbed into English. 
in the year 1982. So let's be honest, this that's just one year after the first Indiana Jones film. So yes, they were jumping on the bandwagon, yeah, to get something like that, yeah. And um, But, here's the twist, I'd never seen an Indiana Jones film when I first saw this cartoon. So as far as I was concerned, this was brand new, yeah. Treasure hunting, going to exotic, you know, faraway lands, yeah. Uh, booby traps or automated machines that, that come and attack you here and there and you have to solve puzzles and riddles in order to work out where the next step is to find the treasure so yeah it was all brand new it introduced me to a whole new world yeah the definitive treasure hunt story yeah and it is unpredictable you have no idea what's going to happen next every now we find new characters make new friends new enemies characters that give you helpful hints along the way yeah, Mayuka tells Esteban how his real mother she she was an Inca priestess or something, but yeah, yeah, it's all it's all it's all thrilling stuff. Lots happening, yeah, and we have some character development. Yes, Esteban has vertigo, but he gets over that. Well, he has to really because he pilots the Golden Condor. Yeah, oh yes, but before that, we find the Solaris, which is a ship that has a small sail, but when you pr press some buttons and pull some levers. The, uh, the sail goes down and a big metal one comes up and it makes the ship go much faster. It's solar powered, which makes sense. The Mayas, the Aztecs, they all worship the sun. Yeah. So, yeah. And again, that's science fiction, the, the automated oars and everything. But again, you can't say that's wrong because we know very little about the original Heva people. Yeah. And um, yes, Mendoza, he, he's just in it for the gold. He's after the gold. Yeah. But as the story develops, he has a choice. He could just leave Esteban and the other kids have been kidnapped. They might be killed. He could just go and get the City of Gold on his own, but he doesn't. No, he saves them first, then goes for the City of Gold. So yes, a bit more respect for human life, yeah. And Pedro and Sancho, his companions, they're stupid, they're morons, but they are loyal, very loyal. Whereas Spanish soldiers betray Mendoza a number of times, yeah. And they want to find gold for different reasons. Yeah, Esteban wants to find the city of gold to find the true identity of his real father. The Olmecs want to find the gold in the belief that the gold, when it's mixed with their chemistry potions and stuff, will enable them to live forever, immortality. Pedro, Sancho, Mendoza, they want to find the gold, well, for the obvious reason. They want to be rich, yeah, incredibly rich, yeah, yeah. And uh, the Olmecs... A very mysterious tribe that live in a mountain called the Burning Shield. They're shorter than regular people. They have no hair and big pointy ears. You know, a bit like aliens or a bit like the Mekon and Dan Dare. And you can't say that's wrong. Nobody can say that's not what the Olmecs look like because we don't know. We don't know what they look like, yeah. Because when the first Europeans colonised America uh, and, and Central and South America... They found the remains of a civilization, but something killed the Olmecs. Something made them extinct. Nobody knows what it is, yeah. And, um, well, okay, that's why the Olmecs want to become immortal, because they can't have children, so it's to stop their race becoming extinct. And they start lots of wars. Why would you start wars if your people were sterile? There's the risk of you becoming extinct, yeah. But that's kind of the point. The Olmecs are very set in their ways. They're behaving like everything's up the same as it was before, yeah. And there's a bit when they steal the sun unit from the City of Gold. The priest says, if you share the power with us, we'll teach you how to use it properly. And Commander Cormac says, no, Olmecs do not share. We won't share with anyone. We keep all the power for ourselves. And the greed destroys them. It becomes their doom. And that's significant because there's a character called Governor Pizarro in the story. This is earlier episodes. And in real life, Governor Pizarro, he had enough gold to last about 30 lifetimes and he wouldn't share it with any of his fellow Spaniards. Yeah, so, so they turn against him and he ended up bankrupt. Yes, greed can destroy you. So overall, yes, it's a great feel-good factor, fun kids' adventure story. And you can enjoy it as a grown-up as well. It's a lot of fun. But on a serious note, it's not just about gold and treasure. It's about being a bit more worldly, a bit more open-minded. Yes, the Mayans and the Incas and the Aztecs, that they were deemed stupid, dumb savages that deserved to be conquered. But we now know that's not true. No, the Mayas were very intelligent navigators, great mathematicians, great astronomers. Yeah, so show a bit of respect to an ancient civilization. They were, they were great in their day. They were really clever. So you become more open-minded and more respectful of the world in general. Okay, Cities of Gold is a great cartoon. I recommend it, yeah. Thank you for watching. I'm Anthony Hobbs, and I'm never bored.